So hi, uh, today I would like to solve you an example on two converters uh, from your textbook, uh, example 7.3 from uh, Mohan's uh, book. So actually here uh, we have a converter operating at 50 kilohertz and L1 and L2 are equal and they are at uh, 1 millihenry. So C1 is uh, 5 microfarad and the output capacitor is you know sufficiently large and you know it's giving a constant output air here our input voltage is like let me write here so it is uh, 10 volts okay okay so this is uh, 10 volts and output is like uh, 5 volts okay. but again uh, the definition here is uh, remember it is like uh, minus again in some textbooks it defines the polarity like minus plus here and gives the output voltage as negative again as long as you are uh, consistent uh, that doesn't make any difference so we are supplying a lot of uh, 5 watts so I can say the average not in that direction uh, the average current uh, output current is 1 amps okay we are assuming ideal components so actually this is not a uh, design uh, question or anything like that and actually your first uh, projects in this course will be on uh, design of that kind of uh, converter but here you know we'd like to see how accurate our assumptions remember in the analysis of the two converter we assumed the voltage across c1 is not changes changes changing because it is uh, quite large and again in, you know in some cases this can be assumed like the inductor currents are uh, constant but in reality we know they are going up and down and while they are going up and down uh, they are changing the voltage in the capacitor anyway so let's move on so first uh, let's try to uh, find out what is the you know duty cycle and what is the average capacitor voltage and we know uh, that converter is operating as a uh, buck boost converter so they have you know exactly the same uh, voltage relations okay so let me get rid of uh, myself here so let's write so i know uh, v output is equal vd times uh, 1 minus d times uh, sorry i think it was uh, v out is equal to vd times d minus 1 minus d it should be the back converter so I know it is uh, VO, let me put like that, VO divided by VD, so it is 5 over 10, it is equal to D divided by 1 minus D. So therefore, you know, you can see uh, D is equal to 1 over 3, or it is 0 0.33 something. Okay, so for one uh, third of the time, so for one third of the time so that transistor is closed and let me show uh, the direction so whenever uh, it is closed so you have some current direction here okay and whenever the transistor is off so that you know it's like a, a boost convert in that stage and when you turn off uh, that switch that inductor current is going to flow through here and this is going to flow in this direction right so again you know the main directions of the inductors are not changing but they will have a ripple uh, based on the water so green arrows shows the operating conditions in the switch is on operation and the red arrows uh, shows the off operation so anyway so let's try to find out how much uh, ripple that we can have again uh, let's assume a continuous conduction mode and we need to verify it uh, later on so let's try to find again if you you know go back uh, to your slides you will see the inductor current okay of IL1 will be like that so whenever it is on you are charging it so it is uh, the TS and it is charging by VD and whenever it is off it is discharged and that one is uh, 1 minus D 
time ts right so let's try to calculate how much uh, ripple i have in the first conductor so again you can either use that one or that one uh, let's use the ohm period so during ohm period i have the vd okay for how long uh, for d times ts and again uh, if you take the integral you need to divide it by the uh, l1 and again here l1 is equal to l2 that it was uh, one micro and again actually if you would like to write uh, that one is also equal to like uh, during the off period what you see is vc1 uh, again on average you know that will be um, that's the assumption that we were making uh, on average so it will be vc1 minus vd okay and let me write it here as well so it is vc1 minus vd and it is multiplied by 1 minus d uh, ts divided by l1 anyway so they are going to give the same results let's use the actually that is how we obtain the uh, output voltage characteristics of that one and again we proved actually if you go back to slides uh, we proved like vc1 again on average is equal to uh, v out uh, plus vd and it was 10 volts here so it was like 15 volts this is average right so anyway if you uh, put all those numbers in place so you can write uh, 10 times okay uh, 1 over 3 and I know uh, let me write I think FS uh, was uh, 50 kilohertz okay so let's go up it was 50 kilohertz here okay so it is 50 kilohertz and TS is equal 1 over FS either you can leave it like 1 over uh, 50 kilohertz or it is uh, 20 let me write here if we don't have any space so it is 20 microseconds okay so if you put it here 20 microseconds divided by uh, l1 was uh, 1 millihenry uh, you can calculate the ripple current is 0 0.067 amps or it is uh, 67 milliamps okay so again it is kind of uh, small ripple on that one so let's calculate the same one on the uh, second inductor so i can calculate the second inductor the same way okay so the second inductor whenever it is off the red arrow so it is seeing a you know output voltage in that one during how long one over uh, one minus d ts so v out, v out times 1 minus d time ts divided by l2 will give us the ripple uh, during the off period so you can write it like 5 divided by again 1 milli and times uh, 1 minus d is like 2 over 3 or 0 0.666 times 20 micro and once you Calculate it again, you will find it 0 0.067 and 67 milliamps. Okay, so these uh, ripples, okay, IL1 is equal IL2 because so L1 is equal L2. So that was the you know case again. I would like to emphasize if you choose if you choose the same uh, inductors okay if you choose the same inductance sizes they have the same amount ripple same amount of current and therefore you know that is why how we can combine them to use uh, the same uh, mutual uh, inductance so you can use two inductors uh, combined into a single core so for that one they should have the same uh, value of inductance so how we are going to use uh, that value so again what I need to calculate it, we need to calculate the errors, you know, if we assume a percentage, uh, a constant current in IL1 and IL2. And also I need to calculate the voltage uh, ripple 
in the VC one. But before continuing with on that one, so we know, okay, what we know is, uh, let's calculate that one. So what is IL1 average? Okay, so I know I'm drawing a 5 watts at the output. Okay, so let me put myself here. I know we are drawing a 5 watts at the output and the input is 10 volts. So the IL1 average will be 0 0.5 amps again. And at the end of day, all that average current is flowing through IL2. Okay, so IL2 average is equal 1 amps. And actually the ripple okay of the IL1 is smaller actually much much smaller than IL1 average and the same is true for uh, the second inductor average so therefore I can you know verify uh, CCM is verified the continuous conduction mode is verified okay so now uh, let's continue with the second part okay so now i need to again as um, for uh, because the question asks like what is the percentage error let's uh, calculate that one uh, for uh, inductor currents okay so delta il1 divided by il1 average uh, that is 0 0.067 uh, divided by 0 0.5 or it is like 13.4 percent ripple okay and um, for uh, the second one so again it will be half of that value but anyway let's uh, write it for one it is 6.7 percent ripple okay again you know that satisfies the condition for uh, CCM and actually if you ask me maybe you know depending on your requirements maybe inductor uh, size can be reduced okay And now let's calculate the uh, capacitor uh, capacitor ripple. Okay. So for that one, again in reality, what is happening is like uh, inductor currents are reducing, okay, or increasing depending on the operation, and that will uh, result in nonlinear charging and discharging characteristics of the capacitor so again like it normally it's a second order uh, differential equation and in your uh, simulations in your simulations uh, in a computer simulation you will see exact shape of charging and discharging characteristics but uh, for that question so let's assume let's assume the current okay coming through IL1 and IL2 are ripple free so what's happening is uh, during the on period while the green arrows are active so it is IL2 current let's assume it's constant that one ampere is charging it for uh, 1 over 2 per 1 over 3 period and while it is you know uh, sorry that one is uh, like discharging so while it is off the current direction is reversed but again we can calculate how much voltage you know is moving based on the capacitance of a 5 microfarad and we if we assume a constant current okay so let's uh, do that one so again you can calculate uh, i don't know let's use the il1 again it is assume constant 0 0.5 uh, amperes ripple free and I can calculate the change in the capacitor voltage like uh, I know the current so it is 
current times uh, again uh, if you multiply the uh, current with time it gives you the charge and if you divide it by capacitance it gives you the delta V the voltage difference right so we will use uh, that relation so again uh, actually the inductor L1 is charging capacitor not during the on time but during the off time so I will uh, use the off time here so it is uh, 1 minus 1 over 3 uh, times 20 microseconds okay and divided by the capacitance is 5 microfarads okay so again you know you can get rid of those things and you can find it like 1 over 33 volts less than 1.5 volts again on average we calculated uh, the voltage to be uh, 15 volts so VC1 so uh, we see one average again it was from the you know derivation or the power flow you can drive it both ways it was uh, 15 volts okay 15 volts and the to total uh, voltage ripple from average is like half of that value so you can say like we see one in reality is uh, let me write it like that uh, 15 volts plus minus uh, 1.33 divided by 2 actually it goes you know half of that value because uh, let me draw it here so if you have a ripple like that and this is the average value and this is uh, your voltage anyway so at the end of the day so we are talking about 1.33 volts and actually if you uh, define it like what is the ratio of to the average value okay uh, that is uh, 1.33 divided by 15 so it is around 8.9 percent so less than uh, 10 percent uh, ripples okay again you know that is uh, kind of realistic of course like having a variable voltage in that one okay if that voltage for example if you choose not five microfarad but if you choose one microfarad then you will have a much uh, larger voltage variation and that will start affecting your output voltage characteristics okay or i don't know maybe you what you would like to change uh, choose a 50 microfarad then the voltage ripple will be you know less than one percent it will be 0 0.8 percent again so you will have a more stable output voltage and currents but it that will increase the size and the cost of your converter again so all you know choosing the values of the inductances and capacitors uh, should be done properly and after choosing it either by using analytical uh, calculations or using computer simulations you should verify uh, the proper operation of your converter okay so thank you